Good morning. My name is David Needham. Um, I work for Chapter 3. Uh, for Chapter 3, I'm a themer and trainer, so I make we websites look beautiful, and I travel around, uh, now officially travel around the world, uh, telling people about how much I love Drupal and, and what it can do. Um, joining me today is Kate Miller in the back. Hello. Um, she's going to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be uh, helping to facilitate uh, questions and, and discussion by by carrying a mic around. So um, today is going to be a little bit of an open forum. Um, we're going to be discussing. It. I'm going to be speaking from my personal experiences, but um, you know, like like most things, you know, I, I'm sure that you each have your own opinion, and especially when it comes to things um, internationally. Like I've only had experience telling people about Drupal in America, um, so. If if you are not from America or you have more experience speaking in other countries, I would I would definitely appreciate you uh, giving your own opinion or you know, when things differ when when maybe something I say may not be true somewhere else. Please you know speak up and and just let us know so that um, myself and everyone else can benefit from that. Um, and if you wave your hand madly, I'll come with the mic and then it'll be recorded for posterity. That's right. So the, the, the slides and the mic, the audio is all being recorded. So if you want to check this out later, it will be posted on the page uh, for this session on DrupalCon London. Um, so I, as we said, we work for Chapter 3. Uh, I'm a trainer and themer. Kate is the training coordinator. Um, chapter 3 is a, a small-ish web design shop, a Drupal shop in San Francisco, California. Uh, everything that we do is in Drupal, you know, training, we do, you know, the actual design, we do the, the site building development, um, kind of the full spectrum. Um, and, and along the way, uh, I, I learned that there were several different types of people, and for each one of them, you have to kind of describe what Drupal is in a different way. So this, this all stemmed from, uh, it was actually Kate's idea to begin with, um, and it stemmed from this, this idea of the first time that you meet someone, um, whenever you're introduced to someone, you know, some friend, or maybe you're speaking to a client, or um, you know, whatever the case may be, they always end up asking, so you know, what's this Drupal thing? Or you know, when you meet someone new, you're introduced to them, they always ask, what is it? You know, what do you do? And you say, oh, well, I, you know, I build Drupal websites, or or something like that. And you know, for the most part, depending what group you're in, they may not know what Drupal is, um, and depending on that, you have to kind of adjust this uh, description of what exactly you think Drupal is. So I say I build Drupal websites. This is the sort of look I always get, kind of a, a blank stare. Um, they're not exactly sure. It's like, you know, Drupal, what's that? Um, so first off, kind of the, the average person. Um, you have to be very basic with your description. I just say, like, Drupal lets me build websites that help people build their own websites without needing to know anything about programming. So, you know, to the most simplest, simple isn't the right, w right way to put it, but for people who uh, maybe not, don't have a, a technical background, um, you can say that you build websites that help other people kind of build their own websites. You provide the structure, Drupal helps you provide the structure um, that they otherwise wouldn't have. You know, people that, that don't know HTML, don't know CSS, don't know PHP, um, don't need to know any of those things in order to keep their website going, to keep updating and maintaining their website along the way. And then there's IT people. So, you know, you might be working in a company where, you know, it's, it's not a Drupal shop, and you have to explain what Drupal is to IT people, to um, kind of geeky, you know, server-side, um, you know, Linux people, which is fine. I know there are some of those here, so I don't mean to offend if that's the case. Um, so in, in that case, I would say Drupal is an open source system for managing content and displaying it on the web. There's no software to install. Uh, it works on every operating system, even a mobile browser, and it's modular. So you have to be, um, in this case, I found it was better to be uh, a little bit more technical. You know, they get a little bit more meat. They can kind of uh, understand a little bit more about what Drupal is meant for, as well as, you know, the modular bit will help them to um, kind of help uh, embrace it so that you can say, hey, you know, this is a modular system. I can extend upon it. I can save tons of time. I can save money. You know, I can save, you know, do good things for the company um, by using some things that other people have done. So I can, you know, take those things and, you know, put them into my website, put them into our company website, and save everyone a lot of hassle. And then, of course, there's Drupal people. 
uh, I believe this is from Copenhagen. Um, if we're at a convention like we are now, you know, DrupalCon, you can be very open. You can skip over all, oh, Drupal is open source or whatever. You know, if someone comes up to you here and they say, hey, you know, what do you do? You can say, oh, well, I'm a Drupal themer. You know, I have a theme on Drupal.org. I, I go to you know, this. Oh, I went to Copenhagen. I went to DrupalCon San Francisco, DrupalCon Chicago. Um, you can say, hey, I volunteer. Maybe I help, you know, present. I help to, uh, to actually run some of these conferences. And you can get in a lot more depth. Um, you can be a little bit more prideful, a little bit, you know, proud of what you do, and you can kind of um, explain that to them in a totally different way. Um, so, I, I, I found this out, I, I, didn't, I didn't find out the hard way, fortunately, but like, when I was on the plane and I was filling up my little custom sheet, um, I did not put Drupal, I, I do Drupal, it's an open source, blah, 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 I just put, I build websites or web designer. Um, of course, you know, if you're speaking to someone who really doesn't care what you do, you know, if they're the authorities, if they're, um, you know, someone who's maybe just being polite, I still just say, I build websites. Um, there's kind of no way around that, I've found. So, based on this sort of structure, you know, it, translating Drupal um, in a different way for each individual group of people, um, you're, you're able to give very brief descriptions, but you know, in order to speak more, um, more openly, um, if they have questions about, hey, well, you know, that's cool, where did Drupal come from? Uh, you kind of need to know a little bit of the history. So, if you don't know already, I'm just going to give a brief history about where Drupal came from. Uh, Drupal was started in 2001 by Dries Biotart. I'm sure you all know him. If you haven't had a chance to meet him, he's the, the giant with the spiky hair. Uh, you just shake his hand, he's pretty cool. Um, he was at college with his friends, and he basically needed a way to communicate with them. He had to, um, he wanted to let them know, hey, what's going on, or, you know, to be able to share things, to be able to talk about uh, different events that might be going on. Uh, basically, he wanted to build Facebook, unofficially. It wasn't like Facebook for everyone, it was just Facebook for his friends, just a way to um, communicate, a way to talk about their own things. Um, so he created the system. He, um, you know, was in college, he did all this, and then afterwards he decided, you know, hey, you know, other people can benefit from this. So the next year he decided to publish it online. He said, okay, well, what would be a good name for this? Uh, he said that it's sort of like a community, sort of like a village. So he decided to name, oh, the, the first name for Drupal uh, was Dorp, which in Dutch, if you don't know, he's from Belgium, in Dutch is community. And if, if someone, if I'm getting this wrong, someone please. Finnish? Village, thank you. Um, so he named it Dorp. He went online. He's going to look for a, uh, a domain name. He goes to type it in, and he makes a typo. Instead of typing in dorp.org, he types in drop.org. And drop.org is available. So he thinks, hey, you know, it's, it's not every day that you can get a, a four-character domain name, let alone something as cool as drop. So he buys drop.org renames the project to, uh, you're gonna have to help me with the pronunciation, like Drupal, anyone? Okay. Okay, so it's, it's Drupal, and uh, it, it gets popular, other people know about it, it comes, you know, America, we pronounce it horribly, we can't get it right, we mess it up, we, we mispronounce it, we misspell it, and it's just not working. So he decides to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, we keep trying to pronounce it Drupal, and so he, or he renames the project to be, as it is today, Drupal. Um, so it's much easier. Of course, we still get people who try to pronounce it like Drupal. Uh, we, we do a lot of trainings, and it's kind of funny. We'll get people at the very beginning, they'll say Drupal. And you can kind of tell about like, what sort of experience they've had with the community or, or whatnot. But, um, so that's the basic history of Drupal. Um, if you're wondering about where the like, Drupal.com, the little drop came from, uh, that was kind of an uh, iterative uh, design process. It started with a droplet in a circle, um, and it kind of progressed. They were playing with different ideas, and they realized uh, if you put two droplets kind of side by side, it looks like the infinity symbol. Uh, so if you, if you make the infinity symbol, you put it within a drop or inside of a circle, it sort of looks like eyes. 
So if you look, you can still see the infinity symbol as the eyes of the drop. They added the face and the nose, and the Drupalcon was born. So also, Drupal is open source. Uh, you can talk about this for a long time. Um, if you don't know, this is uh, Neil Drum, uh, uh, core maintainer of Drupal 5. Uh, he works out of our office, so I just had to include a picture of him. Um, and Drupal is open source. So a, a lot of people, when you first tell them this, you know, you say, hey, anyone can see the code. You know, it's, it's a collaborative thing. Um, anyone can work on it. You get a lot of flack sometimes from especially uh, maybe not the IT people who are into Linux because they kind of get it, but you know, maybe your boss, maybe anyone who um, might be a little bit less technical, but um, a little bit, you know, they think they're technical. <laughs> they might hear open source. They might think, oh, well, that sounds horribly insecure. It sounds like, you know, inefficient. You know, how am I supposed to get support? How am I supposed to um, make sure it'll work exactly how I want it to? Um, and as you should all know by now, like Drupal is one of the most secure, if not the, secu the most secure, content management system today, just because, because everyone can see the code, because we have so many talented people um, at DrupalCon today and you know, throughout the world, um, they look at the code, they make suggestions, it gets improved, and it keeps going, going, going. It keeps getting better, it keeps getting cleaner. Um, and so, I mean, just try to use whatever experience you have in the community um, just to describe open source in that sort of way. And of course, there are always people who say, well, hey, you know, Drupal sucks. I only use WordPress. Or, you know, I only use Joomla, you know. And, and certainly there are some cases where WordPress or maybe Joomla would be okay. Don't, don't come up here in like a mob and beat me up for that. But, you know, if you're building just a, a simple blog site, uh, you don't need any additional functionality. You don't need anything, you know, too fancy. Just a very simple blog site with um, probably just like one person on it. WordPress is totally okay. Like WordPress is really good at doing just a simple blog site. Um, if you want anything more than that, if you want something uh, with a little bit more meat, a little bit, um, you know, more power, of course, you could use Drupal. Um, but even then, you, you'll get people, you'll get critics who um, can pretty much never agree that Drupal is good for anything. Um, and in those cases, you kind of just have to roll with it and agree to disagree. Um, this is a great opportunity. Does anyone have a good story about maybe a uh, someone who is against WordPress, or I mean against Drupal who's in favor of WordPress? Can someone share something? No? Wow. Yep. Yeah, just wait for the mic. Okay, I don't have a story, but um, where I work, we are we are used to use WordPress, mm -hmm. and of course we are not against Drupal because I'm here. But we actually we feel like with WordPress we can build uh, great websites. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. You you can build great websites with Drupal, but it is incredibly limited. Um, you know, if you try to to grow beyond what WordPress is made for, it becomes pretty difficult to add in those additional things. I, that's what I've personally found. It's okay? Yeah? Hmm. Okay. Thanks. All right, so, so the other side of this is maybe you're trying to describe what you know, um, you know, your Drupal skills or whatnot to a Drupal shop or to a freelance client or, you know, whatever. Just real quick, uh, could I get a hand count? Um, who in here works for a company that only does Drupal or web design stuff. Okay, who works for a company like on their website that is not a web design company? A couple, okay. And who in here does just freelance work? Like they're their own company. Okay, so a couple of each, mostly Drupal shops, that's cool. Uh, before I worked for chapter three, I did all freelance. Um, so I have the background, you know, I, I, I kind of um, learned a little bit about what it takes to, to get work in the Drupal job, um, like in the Drupal field for in freelance work. Um, and I found that if you want a job in Drupal, uh, if you want to, you know, find work, if you want to, you know, if you're a freelance looking for clients or maybe you're looking for an official, um, like official job with a, a shop or something, uh, it's always good to have a, a Drupal resume. 
Um, if, if you're targeting people, if you're targeting clients, uh, they may not always care about that it's Drupal. Um, it's always good to have kind of Drupal separated. It's always good to have um, just something you can show people to say, hey, here's my, my Drupal skills. You know, here's the things that I'm good at in Drupal. Um, and that goes for the portfolio as well. You know, maybe you, you have a lot of experience building themes um, and you want to share those off. Well, obviously you should have those up on your own, your own website and a portfolio so that you can show, you know, here's all the stuff that I'm good at. Because um, if you show it to a Drupal shop, um, like someone that, that only does Drupal stuff, they probably don't care about, you know, what you've done in some of the other things. You know, maybe they're, they're, they think it's interesting that you know Flash or, you know, something else, but maybe they don't so much care about that as, as much as the Drupal stuff. Um, also, um, the next two here, you know, helping the community is uh, pretty much the best way to get a job. I and mean, that's, that's how I was actually hired at, at Chapter 3. Um, Drupal shops care a lot about people who care a lot about the community. Uh, they want people who kind of um, are, are a little bit self-sacrificial. You know, they give up their time, they give up their energy and uh, for the good of the community to, you know, help people that are having problems, um, you know, to, to come to events like this and kind of better themselves um, and just be able to, to share, you know, through, you know, IRC, you know, helping people out there or to you know talk in forums, or to you know add your code to patches and whatnot. Um, it's it's very common that if you if you'd like a job in a Drupal shop, they'll look on Drupal.org and see what sort of things you've done. Um, so from your your Drupal profile, you can see, oh you know you've updated documentation, or you know you've um, been involved with these various projects. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later. There's there's another um, sort of service called Certified to Rock, um, which will kind of help you to um, put your name out there too, or to, to give you a little bit of credibility in those. Um, and last one, of course, you're all here, which is great. Um, if, you're, if you haven't volunteered at something like this before, it's a great way to, um, again, just like help out the community to um, kind of rub shoulders and, and meet new people. Um, I got my job at Chapter 3 because I went to DrupalCon San Francisco, and I volunteered for every time slot. So I didn't choose like what sessions I wanted to go to. I volunteered for every time slot, and I said, okay, send me to a room, I'll be a, a room monitor. And so I hopped around room to room, and I did that. Um, and some of the people at Chapter 3 who were, were helping to run DrupalCon San Francisco kind of noticed, and they asked me to interview, and so it ended up with a job. Um, can't guarantee that you all get jobs if you volunteer for everything, um, and it is kind of a time sink as well. But you know, it's again like I wasn't doing it for the job; I was doing it because I enjoyed uh, the people, I enjoyed helping out, and that is exactly what they were looking for. So, certified to rock. Um, a lot of you have asked, "What is certified to rock? How does it work?" Well, basically, you type in your Drupal.org username. Um, and if you don't know, this is a website called certifiedtorock.com. Uh, if you type in your Drupal.org username, like Dries, it'll give you a score. And if you type in like another name, like uh, one of our founders, Josh Koenig, you can see, oh, here's another score. And if you type in someone like me, it's not a great score. <laughs> um, so if you type in your name and it's not there yet, if it doesn't come up with anything, uh, don't be afraid, don't, don't worry. Um, it doesn't register everyone on there. It only registers people who have reached kind of a, a certain point. Um, and the way that it works is it, it takes all the things that are measurable on Drupal.org. Um, it looks at the things that would have your name, your Drupal username on it, and it uses those to kind of add points um, to give yourself a score on Certified to Rock. So, you know, anytime that you leave a comment, Anytime that you are mentioned or you, you say something in an issue queue, you know, so whenever you help people um, in there or ask for help, uh, your score can go up a little bit. Um, also, if you submit patches, you know, if you say, hey, you know, there's this problem to this module, you know, here's a patch to fix that. And then even better, if the module maintainer includes that, you know, if they pull that patch into their module and it gets accepted, then again, your score keeps going up. And then of course, if you become a maintainer or co-maintainer of a module or theme, uh, your score just keeps on going up. 
Um, additionally, I mentioned, um, well, I didn't mention, but if you do documentation, you know, documentation is, is pretty massive. It's, it's a massive undertaking on Drupal.org just to keep everything up to date, to keep everything relevant to, you know, Drupal 6, Drupal 7, Drupal 8 upcoming. Um, and so anytime that you can update any of that and, and kind of keep it relevant, um, if you try something and it doesn't work right, you know, consider updating the documentation to reflect uh, what didn't work for you, or you know, if you did get it to work, then you know what steps you took to do that. Um, and then additionally, they can manually add in some some extra points uh, for things like if you have an active role in cons, camps, etc. You know, if if the people at Growing Venture, if you see. Uh, maybe you can't see it so well. It's Growing Venture Solutions. Um, they're the company that kind of constructed this system. Uh, if they're notified, if if you know if there's a camp, if there's a con, um, and they're notified that hey, this person has uh, this person was in charge of doing this particular thing at the camp, you know, um, then they say okay, great, you know, give us you know give us a, a number of I think it's like one to three of um, like what good of a job or not what good of a job, but like how important they were, like what they did, you know, what, what was their score for that? And then your points can go up in that way. So um, if you're involved, if you have an official capacity, or even if you volunteer sometimes, um, they can put in some stuff there. Generally, just be awesome. I mean, it's, it's very general, but, you know, if, if you do good things in Drupal, if you do good things in the community, um, and you, you know, even if you don't do it to be noticed, Chances are you will be noticed eventually. You know, people will see all the good things you're doing, and you'll get credit for it. So I took this quote from um, the Twitter at Drupal Truth, the Drupal Information Minister. Uh, if you don't follow him, he's uh, pretty hilarious. But I asked him what is Drupal for the sake of this presentation. He said, "What is Drupal? It's the last thing you'll see before you're cast into the pit for your insolent questions." Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, a very um, tongue-in-cheek sort of Twitter account, but definitely check it out. Um, and that's all I officially have. Um, I, I would definitely, like I said, this is a sort of meant as a discussion, so uh, I welcome questions, comments, uh, additional topics, if you all have anything to talk about. I don't really understand this uh, rock thing. Um, I mean, um, for example, I've been the project leader for uh, <coughs> Drupal Camp in Stockholm. Uh, it was, well, last time. Um, I haven't put it on the Drupal org profile or something. Um, is it a link from Drupal org to the, I, I don't really understand uh, how you can I don't understand really <laughs> okay. how it's working. Well, yeah, I if you were involved with a camp or a con, if you if you ran it or helped run it, yeah. um, then you or, or someone else that's that is in an official capacity of that group um, will no notify Growing Venture Solutions to say, you know, we you know here are the people that were involved. Please, you know, reward them for 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 helping out, and then your your points get increased. So you have to for those things because they can't, they can't. There's no way to like automatically check to see no, exactly. what there is, and so you have to notify them and, and let them know that that there are points that should be given out for that. Okay, it, it's good to update your profile, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always good to update your profile and keep things relevant. Uh, if you have attended, you know, Drupal camps and cons, and if you do, you know, documentation and whatnot, always mark those things on your profile too. And, and also, I should say, like, if it's not an instantaneous thing. Um, it takes a long time for, for things to kind of go through the system, and they only update it, they only update scores about twice a year. Um, so if you've done something, if you've been part of a camp, if you, you know, helped with, t you know, this today, um, if you've recently started doing a module or theme, uh, you may not see points for that for several months. It just, it takes a while for them to go through everything. Any more questions or discussion topics?
so you had to walk all the way from the, the back to the front. Um, our, our company, Atomic, we've got offices in Australia and we've got them uh, here in England. And sometimes when, we get, um, when we're pitching for jobs, sometimes we directly get asked for Drupal as a CMS and sometimes they just don't care what it is. So I was wondering, you know, in, in the States, do you, do you get approached by people who, who only want Drupal or do you, do you have the same, same sort of thing as well? Uh, I would say it's generally the same. Uh, we, we get lots of people who come to us for Drupal. I mean, we are a Drupal shop. We only do Drupal stuff. So lots of people will come to us for Drupal. But then there are several other uh, you know, job leads that we hear about where maybe we're applying, you know, we're, we're putting a bid in for a project where it's just a project. Like, they don't care. They don't care if we use Drupal or, you know, whatever. Um, so both, yeah. Any sort of standard blurbage. Um, I believe that there is something on our website, chapter3.com. Um, if not, I, I've definitely seen things on, on several websites where, where they say, uh, here's why we do Drupal or you know, why do we care? And it kind of goes through those things. But it, it, it touches on several of the things that, that we already know. Like, you know, it is a content management system. It, it goes through and it's a modular system, so it saves the client lots of time and money and not having to redo the wheel every time. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. In, in the back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny. Um, I work in the user experience area, and Drupal was brand new to me this week. Um, but I have come across people at our organization who, when I've mentioned the word Drupal, they're like, why on earth are we moving our website to Drupal? It's crap, like literally in those words. And obviously, I have no comeback. And it, um, because I don't, you know, I'm still learning. So is there like a bullet list of comebacks? <laughs> a bullet list of comebacks. That sounds like a good thing for me to add to this presentation, actually. Um, I mean, it, it really depends a little bit on, on what their problem is with Drupal. And, and this can kind of go hand in hand with the, um, the, the WordPress slide that I, I put in where, you know, why would you choose Drupal? Why not, you know, why not WordPress? Um, and, and there are several reasons. I mean, there's, like I said, it really depends on what their their criticisms are of Drupal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I would definitely do is, is just show them some of the other websites that are using Drupal. I mean, Drupal isn't always known for um, you know, being the fastest CMS or, you know, it's, it's not known for those things, but in truth, like Drupal is very, very fast when it's um, when it has these like performance enhancing things added to it. So, um, I mean, some things you could definitely do for that. Just show them the websites. You know, show them, um, you know, um, show like the, the Economist dot com, yes. New York Times dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Acrio website has, has some several great resources where they show you, you know, uh, some some really large websites that are using Drupal. Um, so I mean, if they're concerned about performance, if they're concerned about, you know, our website's huge, why would we consider using that? Well, I mean, there's the speed, which which is not really a concern, you know, in the end. Um, you don't have to worry about like security so much because, like I said, you know, it is the open source. You know, it's constantly being reviewed by the security committee. Um, I mean, it's it's. I don't know. Like I said, it really depends a little bit on, on what what their criticisms are, you know. Most definitely, yeah, yeah. Drupal can be used for um, kind of like I mentioned earlier to to take take um, the power of, of web design out of the hands of the programmers, and it lets people who don't know anything about code, who don't care to learn code, uh, and, and let them edit their own content, let them even move stuff, you know, drag and drop around the page and put it where they want. You know, if you're using panels or, or blocks, um, 
And then uh, like if you use something like Workflow or in Drupal 7 Workbench, you can do sort of this uh, workflow to control, you know, at this stage, you know, there's a content creator role who's creating content and that's all they can see. And then it goes up, well, the editor gets notified when they save the, the content, but it doesn't get published yet until the editor looks at it and puts their stamp of approval and then it gets published. And then you might have content curators who are moving stuff around the page and saying, oh, this should be featured on the front page or, you know, this should be featured on the top of the news, you know, story page or, or something. And so it, yeah, I mean, and you could do all of those things. You could have, you know, dozens of people and hundreds of people in those roles who know nothing at all about Drupal, who know nothing at all about HTML or CSS. Um, all they do is type in the box and hit go, and that's fine. Yeah, and, and Drupal is great at that too, and it's great at controlling, you know, the, the process of creating the content and then managing the content, and then uh, they don't have to say, this will show up on this page, you know, by using views and whatnot, you can kind of have it pulled onto where it needs to go on the website too. Hi, um, this is Heather from Acquia, and <clears throat> we do training and, you know, we also work on client sites, and um, we get to see some worst practices as well as best practices, but I think the thing that's really fundamental in explaining how Drupal works, and, and I think we've talked a little bit about the UI and, and layout, is actually understanding the database, and even if people don't have any database experience at all, they've all worked with Excel files, so they can, they can kind of understand rows and columns and fields and even if they know a little bit more about Excel, you know, generating, you know, some type of query that you can, you know, pull up certain types of information. And that's what's really so different from Drupal from anything else and it causes a lot of confusion because there's this big middleman in Drupal. Um, I always give the example, if you are familiar with WordPress templating system, the WP query being simply a line where you just say WP query, give me a number of posts, this is the category, and it's right in the markup. So even if you didn't know PHP, you could just see it and be like, oh, okay. And we, and we instead have views, and views is incredibly powerful. You can do a lot more than you can with WordPress, and yet it's, I mean, up until now, it has been more complex. And even with the UI improvements, I still think its power isn't completely revealed until you go into the advanced section and understand relationships and, and um, contextual filters now. So going back to the idea of that database again, um, I've seen a situation where a company moved from a wiki system, you know, a really large company using a wiki, a really permissive, trusting um, company with all their staff using wiki, and it's, it was very effective, and yet it wasn't able to scale um, with 3,000 employees. And they moved to uh, Drupal, but they simply forklifted all that wiki content into unstructured text fields. And so now they're still doing the same thing. Um, they're actually like, they've got an office manager in every office, and that information, instead of using a user reference, for example, that's all just edited in a text field. So in, in fact, one unstructured text field, along with their location information, their, um, you know, everything that could be piece of information that could be queried somewhere else. And so we showed them how to add, you know, a field. So now at least they have a time zone field so that they can actually quickly see what time zone something's in. Um, and it's they really haven't even realized the, the value of this idea of dynamic data. And it's kind of like a real missed trick. And I think that um, we have, I think it's really important to just explain that database thing. And, uh, and then all the other stuff comes into place. And then that page model problem kind of clicks together and you're like, oh right, because all that stuff's in the database, I need to query that and then make it display in different places. Because all of the other, uh, so many other systems are, are so different. They're really about the templates and the, the templating system like WordPress. So I don't know if that helps anybody at all yeah. in their work. Thank you, Heather. I think to, to add on uh, to the, your question in the back about uh, like bad experiences with Drupal. I mean, um, I would also see like I've I've seen several websites you know we've had from clients or, or from you know just looking at some websites. You can see uh, there are people who have definitely not built Drupal websites kind of the Drupal way. Um, there are lots of webs or there are lots of companies out there who say they do Drupal, um, but they don't really do Drupal. Like you know they they might do PHP and you know Drupal provides you with PHP, but you know they strip out all of the Drupal stuff that that kind of um, Drupal is great for, and so when they're when they're content creators, when they're you know the people who are actually using that website, they they know we have a Drupal website, 
um, but it's a really, really hard to use, really horrible Drupal website. Um, so if there's some sort of like unresolved, you know, maybe they need to see a therapist or something, you know, just to get over those, those pains. Um, I mean, I don't know, just, it, it really comes down to the, the person that's creating the website and, you know, if they do it in a good way, um, that kind of end user experience is vastly improved. Yeah, Barry. Um, I would, I'm not going to rip off that. I, w I just had a had a thought. Um, there are a lot of questions about your, your presentation. Is a lot about uh, sort of the elevator speech approach to casually meeting people to talk about Drupal or um, uh, or blurbage that uh, a casual person would look at and say, "Okay, this is what this is why you do why you do Drupal." Um, as a as a Drupal shop or a company that does uh, Drupal work. Um, we often want to winnow down and, and be talking to people that have specific agendas, or we often are talking to people that have specific agendas. So we always want to get down to what, what are your goals before we get into any of the discussion, especially evangelism, um, keeping evangelism out of the picture until you get down to, all right, here's specifically what we're talking about. So um, not everybody has the uh, uh, capability of doing this, but especially if you, if you are doing Drupal all the time and you have a shop, and you have access to a community of people, whether it's a community of web designers, com community of people that are looking for Drupal sites. Um, we found that we like to do a general overview of Drupal so that people can get a context before we even get to that discussion. So I don't have to do it, you know, do an hour's worth of contextual discussion with everybody I talk to one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, a lot of people are very interested in Drupal and might come up to you personally, but they are also the type of people, especially if they're looking to use Drupal or thinking about different systems, they would come to a one-hour or a two-hour thing to hear more about it so that they're informed to ask questions and then you have that discussion and you get a lot further a lot faster. So um, we, we, did, we went to a non-Drupal camp, we went to a, a non-profit technology camp and we did a, you know, a what is Drupal um, or introduction to Drupal uh, overview and it was mobbed and people kept on emailing me and saying, when are you doing that again? So we started doing it. We just started doing it on a monthly basis. Um, and have people show up. You don't have to do it monthly, but if you can do something like that, have a, a semi-formal or even informal presentation, get going through some of the things that you talked about. What is this Drupal thing? What's the difference between this and other platforms? Um, and then here's, here's why we do it. What are your questions? Then you get to a point where one-on-one -on -one conversations are far more fruitful and you weed out, not, not that you're trying to weed people out, but people that are, okay, I know enough now to know that Drupal is crap and I'm, I'm out of the room, then you don't have to get into those uncomfortable situations where you're trying to evangelize to somebody that's never going to hear you and you get into conversations with people that are really interested in talking further, further with you. So we found that to be extremely helpful um, as, a, as a community practice in, in our community. So if anybody has the ability to do that, highly recommend it. Uh, I know Acquia has the um, Hello Drupal, which is kind of sits in this space, I think more directed to people that are going to be Drupal careers. Right. Right. Exactly, and that's, that's the space that we're trying to fill. We're, we're, we're talking to people that are um, at companies or more often educational institutions or at nonprofits. And like, I heard about this Drupal thing and people are telling me I need it. This designer I talked to said I have to do Drupal. You know, why? You know? And then we have uh, people that are, are, are doing WordPress sites and are, are frustrated um, uh, in one sense for certain types of sites that I've heard I, I should be doing Drupal sites too. So that's kind of the space that, that, that we're in and the type of people we talk to. So I recommend um, doing that. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's uh, we do a, it's a, it's two uh, it's two hours, but it, well, it ends up being two hours because it's extremely open and I answer questions along the way. The presentation itself could probably fit in a half an hour, forty minutes maybe. I, yeah. I think we did. A, if I remember right, we yeah. did. We actually <laughs> did an introduction to Drupal at. Uh, Drupal Camp, Wisconsin, or uh, Minneapolis. Cities, yep. Yeah, um, and it was uh, pretty great. That was yeah. basically chopped uh, completely. Th the part I did with you uh, was completely chopped out of our, our intro to Drupal slides for for that session, uh, and it went it went over really well at the camp setting too. So it's not something you have to just do yourself. You can you can take it on the road. <laughs> Question up in the front here. Faced with somebody who wants to develop their site in Ruby just from scratch without any content management system, could you kind of give half a dozen kind of key things that doing it in Drupal would, would really improve their life rather than doing it that way? Well, I, I don't Perhaps a couple of things that would be on their side as well. But 
Well, I, I don't know anything about Ruby whatsoever, so... Well, I guess I need anything where they're just building from scratch. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sure that there are people in the audience who know Ruby, so I mean, maybe you can touch on that. I know for, for one thing, I mean, you get the, the, the structure, the, you know, the, the content structure that, that Drupal gives you. you know, it, it's kind of like you're, you're throwing it into the bucket of you know, the void of the database. But by, by putting it in these different sections, you know, the content, the content types, um, using the queries that were mentioned there, you, know, you can make views that have them display anywhere on your website. You know, just by entering them in one spot, it kind of shows up everywhere. And so you get that like, uh, self-curation, you know, automatic uh, promotion feature. Um, also, I know Drupal is really good at like RSS and, and posting to multiple websites at once. You know, so if you if you had like a, a multi-site setup, you know, you could run like several similar sites that are you know kind of running similar content, um, and it shares the database, it shares you know, like those those different avenues, and it can it can post them on all those different sites at once without you know having to do it. Um, I mean, could you pass the mic? Sorry, um, I uh, when I get asked a question like that, I, I'll never, I never, I'll never answer it until um, the my question back is, uh, what are you building and what is it going to do? What do you need it to do? What are the things that you need to be strong about this website? What are the, who's your audience for for the website? Uh, before I'll get into that question, because there are eight billion things about Drupal and you know. 8.2 billion things about about Ruby. Just uh, launching into a random. These are six points about Drupal. Um, often will not hit upon the things that are critical for for that project. So understanding the, uh, you really have to understand the motivation of the person that's asking that question to be able to to answer it to give the six things that are that are crucial for the, for that particular situation. Uh, I think that is, if that's the one thing that um, that I always tell web designers that that I talk to is never get into the six things or never get into to launching about this is what's great about Drupal to understand where the person that you're talking to is coming from. Not that you need to have an agenda, but just so that you can be specific um, and, and, not, uh, and, and just not get f flustered by that. Because there probably is a really good six points for the thing that you, that you do, but you'll never know which six points to cover until you understand what the goals of the person asking the question is. It's very wise, Barry. Any more questions or discussion topics or anything you guys want to talk about? All right. Well, I guess we'll call it a day. Um, again, I was David Needham for Chapter 3, and thank you for coming to my session.